Or just leave the pages alone for a minute. Are we live? It says we're live. I think we're going to be good. All right. Good evening, world of Facebook. Um, right now, I mean, it's 7 o'clock. Let's call it 702. We're ready to roll, aren't we, Rox? We, uh, we had a pretty big day today. We woke up this morning. I went, got donuts for, I cooked, I cooked donuts for breakfast. That's a lie. What? I did not cook donuts. I know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We, but uh, then we went over to Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, well. Who we see? We, it, my Auntie Kai. And? And her sister and her dad. And Uncle Malu. Uh-huh. When we went to Hawaii, Ash and I, last October, a little over a year ago, uh, we went for their wedding. Uh, Kai and Ashley graduated together, and they are a couple great people. And today, her dad and her sister flew in, not today, they flew in this week, uh, from Hawaii, and we got to go over to the old Buckhorn Tavern. If you haven't been there, it's on the west side of Dayton. Hour and, hour and 15, hour and a half, call it an hour and a half drive because traffic on 70 is terrible um and, and and it was great we left a little early but like as soon as we got there it was time for lunch yeah yeah as soon as because it was like we had reservations good. for 11 we left here at yeah. 9 45 we was, got there 5 to 11 had to wait really for them to open the door it was a really long drive i i slept on the way there and on the way back here. so she's a little wired up right now all right let's get let's make this happen Night 10 of 12. What are we reading, Rox? The Polar Express. All right. Here we go. Thanks. Whoops. Watch your finger. I haven't proofread this book yet, so you have to forgive me because you all know how the words go with me reading. I can open the pages. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. Okay. This, who's this by? The Polar Express. Didn't have the dang on author's name on the front of it. Don't do that. Excuse me. My goodness, girl. I haven't been for a long time. Except for a little bit ago. All right. The Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Allsburg. Uh oh. Perfect. That's going to be in there, Dad. Okay, here we go. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, sit up straight. You're going to end up getting out of the camera. They don't want to see me, they want to see you in the book. On Christmas Eve many years ago, I lie quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend has told me that I'd never hear. The ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted. But I knew he was wrong. Late that night... What are you doing, big girl? You gonna make it? I'm trying to keep going. Alright, well, don't move too much. Late that night, I did hear sounds. Though not of ringing bells, from outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. Alright, I gotta take this cover off. Because it's gonna jack with me. I told you. Yeah, you did, you're right. I said still. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard! The conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where? I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express! I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. I cannot do a, uh, oh, Tom, what's his name? Forrest Gump. Oh my gosh. Hanks. Hanks. Tom Hanks. I can't do a good Tom Hanks voice, so I apologize. Oh, by the way, Uncle Joe showed up today. 3.30 this morning. Got a lot to sleep today. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat, n n nougat, 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 never had 
Nougat Center. Nougat Center's white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of town and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. You gonna make it? We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express nev never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, the hills to covered snowed plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen, frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. The North Pole. Have you ever watched the movie Polar Express? Uh, uh, yeah, you have. Because I have. It's been out like 15 years. We have. The North Pole. It was, the hu it was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They are gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give us the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. The conductor answered, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside we saw hundreds of elves. As the train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets where Santa's, with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no farther, we stopped and the conductor let us outside. Choo choo! It started. It has started. Had it rocks. What? Once you start, you don't stop, do you? We passed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I'd ever heard. Across the center, the elves moved apart, and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. They, he marched over to us and pointed at me and said, Let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, Now what would you like for Christmas? Alright, it's enough now. The train has stopped. I know. Okay. I'm still... That means it'd be a... There you go. Now we're done with the train for a while. You gonna, you gonna look at these pictures? Scoot back, scoot back before you fall. You're gonna break and or rip that thing. I knew that I could have any gift I imagined. But one thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood, holding the bell high above him and called out, The first gift of Christmas! Right in my face. Right in my face. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me, and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us, then disappeared in the cold, dark polar sky. Whoosh! Whoosh! On Donner, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen, to the top of the window, to the top of the window, that's all I got. To the window. To the window, to the wall, <laughs> till Santa Claus. All right, sorry. Wait. Wait. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, 
The other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm playing that on Uncle Jeff. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly felt, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled. He cupped his hands and around his mouth. Merry Christmas! He shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. Ooh, I the picture. I forgot the picture. Are we getting comments, Joe? Are we getting comments? Yeah, there's some. Dad said hi. There's a hell of a dot father. You have 15% on your battery. Well, that's not good. Stuff like that. <laughs> that's not good at all. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I went and opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I took the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, Oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father. It's broken. When I had shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends, at one time, yeah, most of my friends could hear the bell. Mm -hmm. But as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as long as it does for all who truly believe. The end. All right. Bye, guys. That's the end of it. Uncle Joe, you want to come down here and give a little hello? <laughs> And goodbye. Uh, and a goodbye. Hello and a good night. Wait, I don't think you're on there. There he was. I said Hi. hello and good night. No, all right, you may you might have then. All right, Rox, tell him, give him an adios. Adios. Muchachos. Aloha. Aloha.